It's the show where Hawaii's newsmakers come to talk and to take your questions live. From the nation's capital to Honolulu Hale, from the state legislature to the fifth floor, we bring the experts to you and ask them what you want to know. Spotlight Hawaii with Yanji Denise and Ryan Pillay Suji on the digital platforms of the Honolulu Star Advertiser. This episode of Spotlight Hawaii is brought to you by Long's Drugs. Aloha and thanks for joining us here on Spotlight Hawaii and the digital platforms of the Honolulu Star Advertiser. I'm Ryan Kalei Suji, joined by Yanji Denise. And Yanji, this morning, you know, there are, it is a busy time at the state legislature, a number of bills going through the legislature uh, and, and really being debated on. And some of the issues, of course, is regarding housing. But this morning, we are going to talk about housing and a specific community uh, in our community. That's right. We are talking about seniors. And of course, the best place to go, the experts on that is AARP Hawaii. We are joined this morning by the head of AARP Hawaii, Kaylee Lopez. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Appreciate you doing this, uh, spotlighting this issue. Yeah, this is so important. And what really caught our attention, Dan Nicasso had written a piece uh, about tiny homes and the legislation that is going through to try to expand the availability of tiny homes. He wrote that in the Honolulu Star Advertiser. And one of the things that he highlighted there was testimony that your organization had submitted about the vulnerability of seniors in our community. Can you tell us a little bit about the study uh, that you did and the data that you've gathered about who is most at risk right now when it comes to evictions and homelessness? Thank you. What ARP did was basically utilizing the census data. We partnered with Statista to take a look at and uh, look at that data and basically predict. So it's a predictive um, um, data. And what it showed basically is that Kupuna uh, um, families with small children and Kupuna are at the highest risk of homelessness and evictions. And the concern really around that uh, is the fact that, um, you know, the cost of living in Hawaii is high. What we haven't seen is that basically, uh, whether it's uh, salaries or income, um, doesn't keep, keep pace. And one of the other issues that we're really concerned about and happy we were able to pass legislation last year is how difficult and challenging it can be when you're living paycheck to paycheck to put money away for retirement and save for when you're older. So that uh, that in and of itself is um, a really big challenge for and put pe puts people at risk. That fixed income, limited income, where the cost of everything is increasing so exponentially compared to what um, one may have saved or what one might have so, so for Social Security. And if you can talk a little more about just the, the numbers that we're looking at here, how many seniors here in our community in Hawaii are, do you believe, are the most vulnerable? Um, and, and when it compares to others, uh, demographics in our community, uh, where does the, the seniors of the Kuna stack up against others who are facing some of the similar issues that you speak about? Well, I mean, to be clear, Kupuna are less than 50% of the, that those numbers, but at the same time, the idea of even having, you know, 1,200 kupuna uh, evicted or potentially evicted or homeless uh, still is a staggering number. So it's it's about 1,200 uh, that uh, it predicts are, are going to be evicted or homeless. But then also you've got the, the challenge. So for homelessness, we're looking at maybe uh, about 2,000 for homeless and about 1,200 for evictions. And that's still high. I mean, for anyone who's in that situation, you being the one is still too much. Uh, you know, so that's the thing. I think what people don't realize is, again, it's having that fixed income and the fact that the price of everything keeps going up. And as we know here in Hawaii, the rental rent is one of the biggest expenses. And, you know, they say that really your rent should be no more than 30 percent of your income. Well, here in Hawaii, that's almost impossible uh, for working families. So you do have a lot of folks who are working multiple jobs. Now, if you're a senior who's retired or or can't even work, there's really no real easy way to in in um, enhance your income uh, in that situation. And that's what puts seniors at risk. You know, is that inability to potentially um, 
you know, again, if they're able to and can go out and work, you know, that's 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 an option. Uh, but for many people, they imagine they would be living their golden years, uh, you know, being able to enjoy it. And um, that's what puts Kupuna especially at risk is that potential, the inability to um, have other forms of income uh, if they're especially unable to work. Yeah. And for our viewers, I just want to put those numbers into context. When we think about the city of, and county of Honolulu, the estimate is that we have around 4,000 people in our community right now who are homeless. Um, right. So if you think about, you know, 1,200, adding 1,200 more, that is pretty staggering when we think about the size of the homeless population now and, you know, our inability to really help those people. We see, you know, chronic homelessness is such a huge issue for, for our state. Can you tell us a little bit about what you think about this tiny homes concept that is moving its way through the legislature and how that might be able to particularly help the most vulnerable seniors? I, I think the main thing with the tiny homes concept is that it is still a situation that has uh, where kupuna are still relatively independent, right? Able to move around, do their do a lot of the activities they need to do on their own. I, the truth is Hawaii needs to look at all the different, different options. The benefit of the tiny homes is it's cost effective, right? It doesn't cost as much to be able to establish and put these um, um, solutions out there. And at the same time, I, I wanna make sure you're aware there are numerous uh, Kupuna affordable housing units coming uh, to at least Honolulu relatively soon. Uh, so all of those, I think here's the, here's the truth. It's not going to be one solution. So tiny homes is a great option. Uh, really looking at all of the uh, different uh, pieces of legislation that's going through to address the issue of um, housing for kupuna and, and families of uh, lower income. Let's talk a little bit more about those senior housings, the ones that you say are coming soon to Honolulu. Uh, what can you tell us about those developments and, and how that will impact uh, the, this population? Uh, and moving forward, what other steps are being done to say, see that we have more of those types of developments happening? Uh, is there a path forward for more of those types of developments? And, and what are those conversations like right now, noting that this is a, a big need in our community? that that is such a good good question and the timing is is very good so there's several there's two projects coming up in um that should be actually opening relatively soon in uh, uh downtown honolulu chinatown area uh there's one in moili uh there's a there's several other developments that the city's looking at you know each of the counties are going to be looking at how they can do that the number one issue and uh, is going to be the legislature, county councils willing to put the investment into the development. That's what it comes down to. It's it's a financial issue. Uh, looks like they're pretty dedicated. I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm pretty certain when I was looking at uh, all the people running for office last year, affordable housing was uh, one of their top priorities. So we really hope they're gonna deliver on that. You know, so, one, it's looking at um, different types of development, looking at the different options. Uh, you know, my sense is that the legislature is very committed to that. I know the governor is as well, uh, as is his, um, his homeless coordinator. I don't know if you've had Nani Moderas on yet, um, but really looking at different strategies and recognizing that everybody has to come together. The developer community, uh, wraparound services. That's the other thing I, I would love to be able to talk about is there's a um, su proposal to look at what they call supportive services. And what that means is it's not just let's put you in a, in a affordable housing um, for, um, uh, um, apartment, but let's find services that can help you make sure you, you're successful, whether they're mental health, counseling, uh, the Hawaii Public Housing Authority has one in there that um, works to have them actually provide um, skills training so that people, they're calling it upward mobility, so that people can work their way into, into the uh, private rental market and be able to afford that for them and themselves and their families. Uh, so it's a big part of that is that, but funding's a big one. Funding's a very big one. 
Yeah, we've had Connie Mitchell from Institute for Human Services on our show, and she did say that um, she is very concerned about seniors who become homeless. Um, talking about how the, those folks have, you know, perhaps heightened medical needs, um, they, you know, and that once they become homeless, it's very difficult to then go back. Can you talk about why this population? I mean, it, it's obvious, right, that there are more medical needs, but talk about just the particular vulnerabilities when we are talking about seniors, and once they become homeless, how difficult it is to then become sheltered again. Keep in mind, if they're, you know, one of the challenges is if, if a kupuna is homeless, it's because they don't have family, right? I mean, we know in Hawaii, most of us would have taken in our kupuna, or perhaps their family can't um, provide the needs of this particular person. Um, so what we know also is, you know, think of, think of homelessness as a form of isolation. We know that isolation uh, for kupuna is almost equivalent to smoking 11 packs of cigarettes. It just impacts your brain, the ability to re recover, uh, the mental impact is significant. And once those things occur, it's really hard to have um, the healing of that um, um, happen very quickly. The resiliency is challenged. And so, you know, just as in um, in this situation with homelessness, regrettably, it's it's a the beginning of a really um, challenging journey. And the key there, and I appreciate your question, is how to make sure it doesn't happen in the first place. Because once it does, it is almost impossible to come back from. Not saying it can't happen, but it's going to take a lot of resources, help from everyone to help that kupuna um, be able to come back and um, and and be their resilient and vibrant selves. It's, it's almost, uh, it's really difficult. The good thing is that there are folks out there, uh, you know, in the community that work to make that happen. And at the same time, for all of us, you know, I believe here in Hawaii, I hope, is that we see that it's our kuleana uh, to really help take care of one another. And part of that is getting involved and making sure that our, our state and county governments put the resources behind uh, housing people and looking at programs that prevent people from falling into eviction or homelessness in the first place. And I'm wondering, you know, just as we talked earlier about some of the developments here uh, in Honolulu, but this is, of course, a statewide issue. Every island uh, will be suffering Absolutely. through this as well. Uh, what can you tell us about what we're seeing, uh, maybe on the neighbor islands as well, a any other progress that's being done there, uh, but also what that looks like for some of those who are in rural communities, uh, some kapuna who may be uh, even more isolated now uh, because of just where they live in proximity to other cities and counties within uh, some of these neighbor island communities. How do we best reach out to everyone in the state knowing that the demographic is so different and diverse? Well, definitely one start is is what you're doing right now, is getting the word out, letting people know and making people aware that it's not an isolated situation. There are many, many kupuna across across the islands that are, are challenged. So when you look at, um, for example, from a population perspective, yes, you know, a lot of people live in Honolulu, so we're going to have big, uh, larger numbers. But keep in mind the neighbor islands where maybe perhaps... Um, in Honolulu, it's 49 people of t in 10,000 likely to have this, uh, you know, result in homelessness or or eviction. Well, the numbers aren't that far behind. In uh, on uh, in Maui, I think it's uh, 33 in um, or 39 in uh, 10,000, with Hawaii Island uh, be next behind at 33 or th or 30 in 10,000. So it still is relatively high. I mean, that's just not an okay number. Uh, the other thing is, you know, what people don't realize is Hawaii Island has the actually highest per capita of kupuna live on Hawaii Island. And there are great programs and resources out there, but they're still very limited. There isn't enough. There aren't enough daycare facilities, for example, for kupuna. Uh, there aren't a sufficient number of... Um, uh, home care facilities, just really difficult. Uh, again, think of it as a, as a almost an entire continuum. 
it's not just housing, it's housing and long-term care and taking care of, um, of kupuna in, in, its, in their entirety. Being homed is a, being housed is a critical component of that. It's, again, I appreciate you're doing this because it's the beginning of a downward spiral. I want to talk also about that other sort of spoke in the wheel, and that's the caregivers. Uh, you did mention that a lot of the folks that do end up on the street might not have family, but there are plenty of folks uh, who are living in multi-generational households, um, and that can be a lot not only for uh, the person who's being cared for, but especially for the caregivers, and your organization has done so much to support caregivers in our community. Can you talk a little bit about what you're pushing for this legislative session when it comes to caregivers and supporting them? Well, there's, there's two really good ones out there. Uh, so I'm glad you're asking that question. One is a program designed for workforce development, but it's a long-term care uh, development training program. What we like about it is it's not only gonna try to train more people to go into uh, long-term care, but it also is gonna be made available to people like you and I who want to learn more about how to care for our loved ones. So we hope that that passes, that's critical. Another important one is for those who actually have their, uh, their parent or kupuna live with them, is there's a tax credit being looked at right now uh, to increase that from, so if they're 65 and older and you're able to claim your parent as a, or a loved one or a family member as a dependent, uh, they're looking to increase that. And it doesn't really even cover the cost uh, surprisingly of, of what it takes to uh, care for someone. Right now, that tax credit is uh, $2,400. Uh, the hope is that that's going to be increased if this passes to actually $10,000. That might not, that might seem like a lot of money, but when you think about the cost generally can be well over a thousand dollars per month in um, supplies and whatever else you need to, to do, taking off time from work. And again, that helps uh, you know a lot of folks. Uh, it, it goes a long way. So we're hopeful for both of those pieces of legislation. And if you can just briefly update us on some of the other legislation that you are working on, relating back to the tiny homes and other matters. I, I mean, what are some of the priorities right now and how are those conversations going with lawmakers and the type of support that you're receiving uh, from the legislature as a whole thus far this session? You know, this, this, um, this period is the most critical. Bills have crossed over from one house to the other. So at this point, if a bill dies, it's it's going to be difficult to have anything done this particular, this year. A couple of things that are out there. Uh, I talked about the supportive housing uh, legislation. Um, you know, that's going to be important. Uh, those types of wraparound services. There's also oh Ohana zone, oh Ohana zoning. So being able to have people have a uh, much more uh, easier time to develop and build Ohana homes uh, for their family members. You know, the key piece for us is as we look at uh, the different pieces of legislation is what's going to take it uh, a bit farther if it, if we can have that. The key piece, um, we've been talking about homelessness and, and, and such, is supplemental rent. If people aren't aware, if you're out there and you're someone who's, you know, worried about potentially falling into a situation of eviction or homelessness because you can't make your rent. There are supplemental rent programs and we're looking to see more funding be put into that. Um, so more funding put into that. There's one specifically designed for Kupuna. So those who are 62 and older uh, can qualify as well. A couple of versions of those have died in, in, in certain committees. So we're hoping they make it out of uh, the legislature. So again, supplemental rent. Uh, it, it helps cover the cost. If you look at affordable rentals, you know, some of these units are, could be 400 to 700, but some are like 950 to $1,200 uh, for these affordable units. And once you get the supplemental rent of $500, uh, you still have to cover the difference. Uh, and it, that's very difficult. So we're looking to see more funds put, put aside for that uh, again, and that supplemental rental uh, program for Kupuna. 
You know, you did mention that during election season, everyone says that they support affordable housing. Uh, they, you know, Hawaii does pride itself as a very family oriented community. Absolutely. What do you think about the state for seniors here? Is Hawaii a good place for seniors? Do you see the support that you're pushing for? What kind of resistance are you meeting? And, and you know, just bottom line, is it a good place to be a senior citizen? Absolutely. And it's because of the things you just said. Is it, is it, is it roses and everything? No. Um, I think a big part of that is everyone, including legislators, all have a lot of aloha uh, for kupuna. And I see that in our work and people's willingness to uh, have us sit at the table and want to hear about what's important for kupuna. And at the same time, Hawaii has many of the challenges that others have across the country. The cost of living and the cost of doing business and surviving here in Hawaii is just so difficult. Uh, so the degree to which, you know, we can get together as community members, because it's definitely legislators, but, you know, many of us out in the community have to get involved. You know, one of the things I'm concerned about and ARP will want to look more into is, is this issue of not in my backyard. You know, everybody loves the concept and wants to care for Kupuna. But as soon as you look at affordable housing potentially being put in a neighborhood, there's a lot of pushback. And we want to figure out how can we get that to be less of an issue, have people recognize that everyone needs to be housed. I mean, I really do believe that having a roof over your head is a basic human need that uh, we all want to make sure uh, people aren't having to suffer from um, being unhoused. And just quickly, when we're looking at national statistics, I'm wondering if you can help frame where Hawaii is because uh, this is, of course, not an isolated local issue. I'm sure there are many other places in the mainland that are dealing with this. Where does Hawaii stack up? Well, of course, we have one of the highest per capita of homelessness. Um, I think when you look at the issue of affordable housing, I think there's absolutely more that we can do. We have different challenges. I went to a facility out in Denver that was just amazing uh, in what they were able to do, they pulled different sources of funding to, to build this affordable housing facility that had actual health services in it. But when they started talking about what it cost to build it, you know, I immediately thought to myself, oh my goodness, it, it will cost at least four to five times more than that to build something like that here in Hawaii because of the cost of materials and all of those things. I mean, there are some unique challenges we have being in this beautifully isolated uh, um, uh, islands um, that just add to that. So the key piece, I think, is really how do we look long term? You know, this issue of challenges with housing didn't happen yesterday. It's been decades in the making. And I think we have to hold ourselves and government accountable for saying, you know what? Yes, that's the past. What are you going to do to make sure we improve upon this going forward and that this is not going to continue to be an issue five years, <laughs> 10 years from now? It's just not OK. It's just not acceptable anymore. And, you know, there's a lot of issues around, you know, the pressures of where do you put your money in the end? Legislators and the governor and all of us have to be have to be willing to make some really difficult decisions and say, you know what? It's not OK for people to be homeless anymore. It's not okay for that to be a situation here in Hawaii. And what are we all going to do to make sure that changes? I, I hope we aren't doing an interview years from now where this seems to still be an issue. Can you tell us a little bit for those who are watching and may feel that they are vulnerable, they're worried about eviction, because we do know that there was the eviction moratorium during COVID and that's gone away. Um, for those who find themselves in this situation, uh, you know, absent the, the, these legislative components that we're talking about right in the here and now, what are some resources and what's your advice to folks who may be worried about their current situation? First of all, please, you know, because the other thing we have as a challenge is our, our, our island pride. You know, we, we want to try to make sure we can get it all done ourselves. We don't want, like to ask for help. This is a time, ask for help now, because if you don't, it's actually going to be harder for us to help you later. It's just going to get worse. So early on, ask for help because we're going to be more able to help you now than if, if things get worse. Uh, the best group, the best folks to reach out to is the Department of Human Services, uh, but also within the counties, they have their um, ADRCs, which is their adult resource uh, centers. 
there's a, a phone number for those folks. Um, sorry, I don't have it off the top of my head, but they're able to connect Kupuna in particular to resources. And of course, the, of course, Aloha United Way 211. Uh, Aloha United Way is well tapped into all of these services uh, that are made available for Kupuna. And especially now because the group and the, the resources were able to come together in a very solid way due to the pandemic. So a lot of that infrastructure and support is, is there. You just have to tap into it. It is there and there is help. Well, you know, we only have a few minutes left, uh, but I did want to just present you an opportunity to speak to our viewers this morning about this issue, about the impact that this has uh, on our Kapuna and the overall housing issue. Uh, what is your final message this morning as you head on towards the ending of this legislative session, hoping for some of these measures to go through, but your, your final message this morning for our viewers? You know, the, the truth is, if we're all lucky, we're going to become Kupuna. And the, the matter of how that occurs and what kind of way people get to live their lives in dignity, with vitality, it really is dependent on the rest of us. Kind of, you know, getting in there and caring and looking at, again, getting involved. You you know, whether it's just learning yourself how to take care of your loved one uh, as a starting point, how to take care of yourself so you know that you can age well. We're clear almost everybody wants to age in place, meaning they want to live in their own home as they grow older. And our challenge is how do we let how do we make that happen if people don't have a place? I say we all can contribute and everybody should start right now. We appreciate your time, Kaylee Lopez from AARP Hawaii. Thank you for sharing all of that data with us and what you're doing to help Kupuna in our community and the caregivers as well. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, so you for doing the spotlight. Aloha. Very interesting, Ryan. And those numbers are pretty staggering when you look at, you know, 1,200 to 2,000 Kupuna being vulnerable for eviction and many of those perhaps ending up on our streets. You know, just for context, again, we have over 4,000 homeless uh, in, in our state. And if you added that many more, especially that vulnerable senior population, it, that is a very, very scary perspective and not something uh, prospect rather, and not something that we want to see, especially, you know, when talking to her and to Connie Mitchell about the folks that, at that age range, if they do become homeless, just how difficult it is to then get them into housing and get them to have, you know, a dignified life once again. Yeah, it's good to hear that there is support uh, by those legislative measures that are moving through the legislature right now. Uh, as well as some of the developments that she spoke of that will be coming up here on the island of Oahu that are targeted specifically for seniors and for this growing crisis uh, that she says we are sort of at the tipping point of, noting that there are many in our community who will find themselves in this vulnerable position moving forward uh, and that efforts are being happened. This is not sort of just a one solution type of uh, uh, one solution to one problem. There are multiple prongs that need to be looked at. Uh, and so whether it be through these housing developments geared specifically for Kupuna or through other measures like the tiny homes measures that we also spoke about and other uh, incentives for caregivers, all are going to be important when we have this conversation about how to take care of the elderly in our community and moving forward, how to ensure that they remain, uh, have that dignity and quality of life uh, that they deserve as they enter into their golden years. Yeah. And as she mentioned, you know, crossover has happened. If the bills don't happen now, then they not, they're not going to happen this session. So everyone tracking a lot of movement at the legislature, and we will be tracking this issue for you uh, in the months to come. On Mon or Friday, rather, we're going to be talking to someone who says that affordable housing, especially for Kupuna, is a big part of his uh, priority. And that is Mayor Rick Blangiardi. He, he delivered his State of the City address yesterday. He talked particularly about housing. So we'll be talking to him about this and other issues plaguing the city. A very interesting uh, speech that he gave yesterday. And we will be asking him for more specific follow-ups. That's Friday at 1030. We do hope you join us then. We'll see you then. Aloha. This episode of Spotlight Hawaii is brought to you by Long's Drugs.